It is Christmas Day in a workhouse, and the cold bare walls are bright with garlands of green and holly, and the place is a pleasant sight, for with clean washed hands and faces in a long and hungry line, the paupers sit at the tables, for this is the hour they dine, and the guardians and their ladies, although the wind is east, have come in their furs and wrappers to watch their charges feast, to smile and be condescending, with pudding on paupers plates. To be hosts at a workhouse banquet, they've paid for with their rates. Oh, the paupers are meek and lowly with their thanky, kindly moms. So long as they fill their stomachs, what matter when whence it comes? But one of the old men mutters and pushes his plate aside. Great God! He cries, but it jokes me, for this is the day she died. The guardians gazed in honor. The master's face went white. Did the paupers refuse the pudding? Could their ears believe aright? Then the ladies clutched their husbands, thinking the man would die struck by the bolt or something, by the outrage won on high. But the paupers sat for a moment, then rose mid a silence grim, for the others had seized the chatter and trembled in every limb. He looked at the guardians' ladies, then eyeing their lords, he said. Or is not the food of felons whose hands are full and red, whose victims cry for vengeance for their dank, unhallowed graves? He's drunk," said the workhouse master, "or else he's mad and raves." No, it's drunk or mad," cried the pauper. "But only a hoarded beast who, torn by the hounds and mango, declines the vulture's feast." Keep your hands off me, curse you! Hear me right out to the end. You come here to see how paupers their season of Christmas spend. You come here to watch us feeding as they watch the captured beast. Hear why a penniless pauper spit on your paltry feast? Do you think I won't take your bounty and let you smile and think you're doing a noble action with the parishes' meat and drink? Where's my wine, you traitors? The poor old wife you slew. Yes, by the God above us, my nans was killed by you. Last winter, my wife lay dying, starved and fifty dead. I had never been to the parish. I came to the parish then. I swore with my pride in coming, for ere the ruin came, I held up my head as the traitor, and I bore a spotless name. I came to the parish craving. Break for the starving wife, bread for the woman who loved me, through fifty years of life. And what do you think they told me, mocking my awful grief, that the house was open to us, but they wouldn't give out relief. I slunk to the fifty alley. Twas the cold, raw Christmas Eve, and the baker shops were open, tempting a man to weep. But I clasped my fists together, holding my head awry. So I came to her, empty-headed, and mournfully told her why. Then I told her the house was open. She had heard of the ways of that, for her bloodless cheeks went crimson, and up in her rags she sat crying. Bide the Christmas here, John. We've never had one apart. I think I can bear the hunger. The arrow would break my heart. All through that eve, I watched her, holding her head in mine, praying the Lord and weeping. Two my lips were salt as bread. I asked her once if she hungered, and as she answered no, the moon shone in at the window, set in the rim of snow. Then the room was bathed in glory, and I saw in my darling's eyes the faraway look of wonder. That comes when the spirit flies, and her lips were parched and parted, and her reason came and went, for she raved of our home in Denvon, where our happiest years were spent, and the accents long forgotten came back to the tongue once more, for she talked like the country lassie. I would, but the devil sure. Then she rose to her feet and trembled and fell on the rags and moaned. As give me a crust, I famished. For the love of God, she groaned. I rushed from the room like a madman, and flew to the workhouse gate, crying, "Food for a dying woman!" And the answer came, "Too late." They drove me away with curses.
Then I fought with a dog in the street and tore from the mongrel's clutches a crust he was trying to eat. Back through the filthy by lanes, back through the troubled slush, up to the crazy garret. Wrapped in an awful hush, my heart sank down at the threshold, and I paused with a sudden thrill, for there, in the silvery moonlight, my nads lay cold and still. Up to the blackened ceiling, the sunken eyes were cast. I knew on those lips, all bloodless, my name had been the last. She'd hold for her absent husband. Oh God, had I but known! Had cold and faint, and in anguish, had died in that den, alone. Yes, there, in the land of plenty, lay a lovely woman died, cruel and starved and murdered for the love of the parish bread and young again. Last Christmas, I craved for the human life. You, who would feed us paupers, one of my murdered wife. There. To God, your debtors don't mind me in the least. Think of the happy paupers eating your Christmas feast, and when you recount their blessings in your smug parochial way, say what you did for me too, only last Christmas Day.